Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our special online Hanumatsuri service. My name is Warren Tanigong, and I will be your MC today. Before we begin our service, our Kyonan president, Clifford Kurokado, has a few words to say. Clifford? Good morning, and welcome to the Big Island Buddhist Federation Hanamatsuri or Buddha Day service. Hanamatsuri literally means flower festival and it is the time when we celebrate the birth of Shakyamuni Buddha. It is called Hanamatsuri because he was born in Lumbini Garden where beautiful flowers were in full bloom. I would like to thank Reverend Tomioka and the Punahonganji Sangha for hosting today's service. I would also like to thank Edith Vassal of Hompa Honganji Hilo Betsuing for being today's guest speaker. We're all looking forward to your message. For the past couple of years, we were not able to hold our traditional in-person services for Hanamatsuri or even Boride due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Although some of the restrictions have been lifted this year, we have decided to have a hybrid service to be safe. You are currently viewing the online pre-recorded portion of the service. Following this, at 10.30 a.m. at the old Sumo Ring Pavilion at Liliokalani Gardens, we will have a short service after which you will have the opportunity to offer incense, view the decorated Hanamido or flower altar, and pour sweet tea over the baby Buddha until 2.30 p.m. The pouring of the sweet tea is symbolic of the heavens being overjoyed with the birth and in celebration cause sweet rain to bathe the child. Please join us if you can. Thank you. We will now have an opening chant of Bandana and Tisarana. Please put your hands together. We will now have aspiration by Reverend Tomioka.
Today, in the presence of Amida Buddha, the Buddha of compassion and wisdom, we are here together to observe Hanamatsuri, the birthday of Shakyamuni Buddha, the founder of Buddhism. He was born in India about 2,600 years ago. It is said, legend states that the prince took seven steps and with his right hand pointing to the heavens and his left hand to the earth proclaimed that between heaven and earth, in the heavens above and on the earth below, I alone am the world honored one. All that exists in the three worlds is suffering, but I'll bring comfort. We can find the purpose. Reason why Shakyamuni Buddha was born is to bring comfort in the world of suffering. The significance of seven steps he took, teaching me, I am in the life of suffering, in the sixth transmigration of struggles. They are hell, hungry ghost, beast, human being, fighting spirits, and heavenly beings. Each realm, each life is full of suffering, pains, pride, and attachment. The seven steps is Shakyamuni Buddha's determination, aspiration to save every single person, every single life from the suffering world and then bringing true peace and then tranquility every one of us. That is aspiration of Shakyamuni Buddha. When I listen to the teachings of Buddha, its compassion and wisdom are resonating in my life. Touched by Buddha's compassion, it guiding me to find comfort in that embrace. Whatever I may go through, Buddha's compassion is forever with me. Touched by Buddha's wisdom, it enabled me to see the true reality of myself, a person who has anger, greed, and ignorance. Touched by those compassion wisdom, I am, we are guided, we are inspired, we are urged to re take refuge in the three treasures so that we can find peace and then tranquility in that embrace. Today, let us dedicate ourselves to listen to the Buddha teaching so that we can find true tranquility in our life and then we can make contributions to the society and to our life so that every single person can appreciate their own unique existence and then we can help each other to have harmony, peace, gratefulness in Buddha's embrace. No more me dobbits, 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 no more. We will now have a chanting of the Sutra Sambhu today. Shines in great splendor, but. 
wondrous, wondrous dignity, such the greatness of your light, beyond all comparison, brightness of the sun and moon, and the shining money jewels, when compared to your brilliance, seem to us like blackest ink, that the gutter's countenance transcends all comparison, the great voice of awakening, reasoned through the ten quarters, your precepts, learning effort, meditation, wisdom, are virtues beyond all compare, ultimate, supreme, and rare. Your deep meditation has fathomed all the Dharma sea to the limit and the depth of all things the Buddhas teach, ignorance, anger, and grief, the world-honored one has none, like a lion among men, measureless your great virtue, Vast all your great virtuous deeds, wisdom deep and so sublime, your radiant luminous light shakes all the world's foundations. When I become a Buddha, equal to the Dharma King, I will transcend birth and death, liberating all beings. My given discipline, mind, precepts, patience, and effort, meditation and wisdom shall be supreme, unsurpassed. I will attain Buddhahood, every fair fulfill my vow, bring into all those in fear, great peace and tranquility, though there are myriad Buddhas, beyond measure, beyond count, and grace is numberless, like the grains of Ganges sand. I will honor each of them, equally accepting none, even more importantly, I will seek the supreme way, even though all Buddha worlds are countless as Ganges hands, even though all lands and realms are boundless without measure, yet my life shall reach them all and illumine every place. Such shall be my perfect work, such my power infinite. When I attain Buddhahood, my land will be first and best, place of practice transcendent, its people sublime and rare. Then equal to nirvana, beyond all comparison, with pity for everyone, I will carry all across, 
of confronting quarters to be born into my land to attain pure joyful mind peace and great tranquility be my witness but the please confirm my sincerity now that I have made my vows, I will strive to fulfill them. Buddhas of the Ten Quarters, with your wisdom unhindered, may all of these honored ones know my deepest intention. Even though my body must bear great pain and suffering, I will persevere and strive patiently without regret. A god of splendor of an evening sky will be presented by Puna Honganji Choir.
message will be given by Ms. Edith Bassel. Her message is Ahsoka Flower. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in Gasho. At that moment, the Bodhisattva was born, suddenly and yet peacefully. Immediately after birth, he took seven steps in each of the four directions and pro proclaimed, in heaven above and on earth below, I am the most honored one. I shall dispel the suffering that fills the world. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu. Happy Hanamatsuri and good morning. My name is Edith Vassal. I'm a member of the Hilo Betsuin and I'm on the board of spiritual, Fair, spiritual Affairs and in the Buddhist Women's Association. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak at the Big Island Buddhist Federation Hanamatsuri service. I hope you all are well today. It's not easy to produce a fresh talk about an event that comes up every year. After a while, you start hearing the same Dharma talks over and over again. When Reverend Tomioka invited me to do this talk on Buddha's birthday for the Big Island Buddhist Federation, he pointed out some connections between the Buddha, Asoka Flowers, and Lady Takeko Kujo, the founder of the Buddhist Women's Association, or BWA. I'm glad he gave me some fresh ideas to talk about Hanamatsuri. Thank you, Tomioka Sensei. I hope this will be interesting for everyone. The Buddha's birthday is a very special event for Buddhists. So most Buddhists, especially children, have heard the story of the Buddha's birth. Beautifully illustrated books have been written about it. The story goes like this. King Sudodana and Queen Maya were rulers in India. They had been married for many years, but had no children. One night, the queen dreamed of a magnificent white elephant with six tusks that entered her right side. The sages believed the dream was a prophecy of the birth of a prince. Soon after, Queen Maya became pregnant. When it was close to time to give birth, Queen Maya left her palace to return to her parents' home and have the baby. On the way, the queen and her entourage stopped to rest in Lumbini's garden. The garden was in full bloom, even though it was out of season. Queen Maya raised her arm and took hold of a branch of an Ahsoka tree and gave birth from her right side. Flowers and sweet rain fell from the sky to bathe the baby. The baby stood up, took seven steps, pointed to the sky and said, in heaven above and on earth below, I am the most honored one. I shall dispel the suffering that fills the world. This is one version of the story of the Buddha's birth. This version says, Shakyamuni Buddha was born under an Asoka tree. Asoka is a Sanskrit word that means flower without sorrow. Asoka in Japanese is Muyuge. In Shin Buddhist temples, we celebrate Hanamatsuri with a baby Buddha statue in a small pavilion decorated with flowers. It's called a Hanamido. The Hanamido represents Lumbini's garden. We pour sweet tea over the baby Buddha statue to symbolize the sweet rain that fell on him when he was born. Here's an essay written by Lady Kujo in honor of the birth of the Buddha. Before the birth of Shakyamuni Buddha, people believed in predicting their fate. In contrast, Shakyamuni Buddha taught the law of cause and effect. This clear and simple teaching of Shakyamuni Buddha brought to light the cause of our suffering, which up until then was shrouded in superstition. If Shakyamuni Buddha had not been born, 
Living beings on the earth would never have found the way to escape from transmigration in the sea of suffering. All living things rejoice the day Shakyamuni Buddha was born. I wish to quietly uphold a tradition to commemorate this occasion. Before the first light, we should solemnly stand watch and await the dawn. Lady Takeko Kujo wrote that. So if you feel motivated this Friday on Hanamatsuri, wake up before the dawn and watch for the first light. Think on the Buddha as you do this. It will surely be a meaningful experience. The child who became Shakyamuni Buddha was a real person. He lived about 2,600 years ago in a part of India that is now Nepal. We heard a talk on Bodhi Day last December 8th by Dr. George Tanabe from BDK America. He explained the difference between Shakyamuni Buddha and Amida Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha was the historical Buddha, the person whose birth and life we celebrate on April 8th. Amida Buddha is the Buddha of immeasurable light and infinite life. Amida symbolizes wisdom and compassion and is the most important Buddha in the Pure Land tradition. However, the teaching of Shakyamuni Buddha is the common ground for all schools of Buddhism. Shakyamuni Buddha spoke to thousands of people and gave many, many teachings. He used skillful means to help people out of delusion and suffering. He lived to be 80 years old and taught for 45 years. So that means he made a lot of teachings. But there are two basic teachings which the Buddha shared with the world. Do you know what they were? What comes to mind when you hear the Buddha's teaching? Maybe the Four Noble Truths comes to most people's minds. The Four Noble Truths, there is suffering, there is cause for suffering, there is a way to stop suffering, and the path to stop suffering is the Eightfold Noble Path. Some people compare the Four Noble Truths to the work of a doctor or physician. Identify the illness, find the cause, make a prognosis, and prescribe the treatment. But Shakyamuni Buddha's two basic teachings don't include the Four Noble Truths. That was his first teaching after enlightenment. The two basic teachings are these. First, hatreds never cease by hatred in this world. By love alone do they cease. This is an ancient law. And second, to avoid all evil, to seek the good, to keep the mind pure. This is the essence of Buddha's teaching. These teachings might sound familiar. They're not unique to Buddhism. They're promoted by other religions as well. Love conquers hate is a popular saying. The saying, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind, is attributed to Mahatma Gandhi. Unfortunately, we don't always follow these teachings in the real world. The three poisons, greed, hatred, and ignorance, are everywhere. If we look honestly at our own hearts, we'll find them there too. Human beings are foolish beings, and yet, the foolish person is the main focus of Amida Buddha's compassion. This is why we say the Nembutsu in gratitude. When world leaders ignore the two basic teachings, large-scale suffering results. Russia is waging a war against Ukraine right now, causing massive destruction, death, and suffering. But Russia is not the only country guilty of starting a war. Wars have been going on throughout human history. All wars are fueled by the three poisons, 
greed, hatred, and ignorance. Greed is probably the biggest driving force behind war. I mentioned earlier that Lady Cujo dedicated her life to helping suffering people. In 1904 to 1905, there was a war between Russia and Japan. And it was during that war that she and her sister-in-law, Lady Kazuko Otani, founded the Fujin Fujinkai, or Buddhist Women's Association. The Fujinkai originally helped Japanese soldiers and their families suffering the consequences of the war. Years later, it grew into the international BWA organization of today. This is an essay that Lady Cujo wrote called Pages of Conflict. The history of the world is a record of armed conflict and bloodshed. If all the pages on war were removed from history books, most of their content would disappear. Humanity has used bloody wars to oppress life and to this day has not stopped repeating this bitter experience. It is sad to think that war is a basic human instinct. Never once in history has the world been blessed with peace. Yet the heart that yearns for peace burns stronger than ever in modern times. It could well be that achieving peace is impossible. All we can say is that at this time, peace has yet to come. All of humanity longs for peace. It is a tragedy that we continue to be obsessed with the endless victories and defeats of war. Unfortunately, her words are still true today, 96 years later. Lady Takeko Kujo was born on October 20th, 1887. She was the second daughter of the 21st Monshu, or head priest, of the Jodo Shinshu Honganji Ha. Her father, Kosan Otani, was known as Abbot Nyonyo. Takeko Kujo was a devout Nembutsu follower. She was also part of the Japanese aristocracy had a privileged upbringing, and married a baron. She became a renowned poet, writer, and artist, well known in Japan in her time. Her book of essays titled Muyuge, Flower Without Sorrow, was extremely popular and was reprinted over 300 times. The essays were also printed in a major Japanese newspaper over the course of several months in 1926. This book was named after the Asoka tree under which the Buddha was born, Muyuge. As a committed humanitarian, Lady Kujo dedicated her life to helping people suffering from the effects of war, poverty, and natural disasters. She did amazing and important things in her very short lifetime. In 1912, when women's education was not encouraged in Japanese society, Lady Kujo proposed creating a school for girls. She believed educational opportunities for women would reduce poverty and prostitution, which was legal in Japan at the time. Thanks to her hard work, Kyoto Girls School was established. And by 1920, it had been transformed into Kyoto Women's University. Lady Kujo helped Tokyo rebuild after the great Kanto earthquake in 1923. She was especially concerned about the poor. The Honganji had opened a small free clinic in 1925. When it ran out of funding, Lady Kujo used her own money to operate and expand the clinic. By 1930, it had been transformed into Asoka Hospital one of Japan's first modern medical centers. Asoka Hospital was founded two years after Lady Kujo's death, funded by royalties from her book, Muyuge. 
Although she was part of the nobility, Lady Kujo was not afraid to work among poor people and children in Tokyo's slums. She spent years doing so. Unfortunately, this led to her contracting blood poisoning. She passed away on February 7, 1928, at the age of 41 years. Lady Kujo's contributions to society were based on her Nembutsu faith and the teachings of Buddha. Her work lives on in the BWA chapters throughout the world. Her connection to Hanamatsuri is in the title of her book, Muyuge, Flower Without Sorrow, and in the name Asoka Hospital. Now, going back to the story of Shakyamuni Buddha's birth, many people probably think, how can we possibly believe the story of a baby being born from a woman's right side, then walking and talking immediately? As a matter of fact, that's what I think. But whether we believe everything about the story or not doesn't really matter. What matters is that the Buddha was born. We all know he was born and we're benefiting from his life and teaching. Looking at it this way makes a whole lot more sense. There's an article by the late Dr. Alfred Bloom of the University of Hawaii called Buddha's Birth and the Mission of Buddhism. He says, because of the fanciful nature of the imagery of white elephants, birth of a child fully grown, supernatural rain and flowers, we have a tendency to limit the meaning of such stories to children, much as we do with fairy tales. Nevertheless, if we study the cycle of tales and symbols closely, they may have something to tell us about the role of Buddhism. Buddhism sometimes appears somber and serious when it is focused mainly on death. However, Hanamatsuri as a spring festival, particularly developed in China and Japan as an occasion of beauty and joy. The birth of Siddhartha Gautama, who became Shakyamuni Buddha, is a wonderful occasion to celebrate. It doesn't matter whether everything in the story is true or not. Well, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this talk about Shakyamuni Buddha's birth and Lady Kujo. I hope everyone has a wonderful Hanamatsuri. Take care and stay healthy and safe. Please join me in Gasho once again. To avoid all evil, to seek the good, to keep the mind pure. This is the essence of Buddha's teaching. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Basa. We will now have a reading of homages. Homages. Hard it is to be born into human life. Now we are living in it. Difficult it is to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear them. If we do not gain emancipation in this present life, we may not be free from the ill faring in the ocean of birth and death for Kalpas. Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures. We go to the Buddha for guidance. May we always walk in the way that leads to enlightenment. We go to the Dharma for guidance. May we be submerged in the depth of the teachings and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. We go to the Sangha for guidance. May we all with one accord live the life of harmony in the spiritual oneness, free from the bondage of selfishness. Even through myriads of kalpas, hard it is to hear such excellent and profound teachings. Now we are able to hear and receive them. 
Let us try to understand the Tathagata's teachings. Namo Amida Bhats, 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 Namo Amida Bhats. Thank you for watching our Hanuman Sari service. Please come to Lilya Kalani Gardens, Old Sumo Pavilion, for a short service and to view the Hanumido. Offer incense and pour sweet tea from 10.30 to 2.30 p.m. today. We'll be observing health and safety guidelines. Please be safe and careful. Thank you.